You're watching Telecom TV from the Etsy 5G Network Infrastructure Summit. And I'm joined now by Maria Cuevas, who is Head of Converged Core and Services Research at BT, and also Kevin Hulley, who is Head of Standards at BT. Maria and Kevin, thanks both for joining us on Telecom TV. Now, BT has identified a number of common priority areas that operators in general should be aware of as they make the transition towards 5G. Maria, what are some of the most important areas they should be considering? So the first one that we've mentioned this morning is about gradual migration uh, for our networks. Obviously, 5G being a new technology needs to coexist and integrate and be tightly integrated with existing technologies like 4G and as well 2G and 3G. So we need the tools and the uh, in the architecture to be able to pick and choose which migration strategies we are going to follow. And that includes uh, integration between the radio, and this is a standalone versus non-standalone type options, but also integration with the different core options as well. So how important is it to have both standalone and non-standalone modes for 5G radio? Very important. As I said before, obviously, we have a well-established um, 2G, 3G and 4G network out there. And um, 5G is not a question of throwing away everything that we have to replace it with something new. These technologies need to coexist, need to interwork, need to work together to provide the best customer experience. So the integration either at the radio level or the core level is going to allow us to choose how we roll out the new uh, radio network coexisting and, and interworking with the existing technologies. So Kevin, we've already seen that 5G new radio has led to an acceleration of the timelines within the 3GPP process. Yeah, well, as you know, we had this discussion in 3GPP in Dubrovnik, um, and that resulted in uh, a decision by um, the majority that we should uh, have this accelerated timeline. Um, so the accelerated timeline is uh, aimed at de uh, December for the core specifications. Uh, and um, we hope we can we can deliver that. And Maria, network slicing is another area that you picked up on. There is an awful lot of work uh, and effort into network slicing. However, as we see it, there is pockets of activity, if you like, and there is obviously the core network being sliced, and there is activities looking at how the radio might be sliced. However, we believe that there needs to be an end-to-end -end holistic approach to network slicing, where if operators are going to deploy a new slice to um, meet the needs of a particular service or customer, we need to offer them the ability to manage and orchestrate a, a slice end-to-end, -end, and that will include anything to do with radio, very importantly with the transport network that sits in the buckle between the radio and the core, uh, the core, but also the service domain, which may expand into even the customer domain. So this is a multi-domain issue, obviously, that can expand across uh, multiple administrative domains. And Kevin, does the extra complexity of network slicing mean further collaboration with other standards development organizations and groups? Yes, so um, there is quite a lot of activity in 3GBP discussing about um, when a, a device wants a certain type of network slice, how does it ask for that? How does their network then construct that and provide that to the, to the device? Um, but as well, we, we need to rely on other technology from things like Etsy NFV, uh, where they provide the orchestration uh, capability that we can reuse in, in 3GBP and, and deliver the right solution for the customer. And Maria, you've already done some work on network slicing and made the results public. Yes, we have. So we have published a collaboration agreement with one of our industry partners, Huawei, uh, and we have released a video which we showed at Mobile World Congress together with a, with a demonstration of end-to-end -end network slicing, which illustrates pretty well how um, this is important to our customers and to us operators and how it needs to work fully end-to-end. Now, Maria, after many, many years of talking about fixed mobile convergence, it appears that 5G might actually deliver on this promise. So, so in BT, we're very keen uh, to push this concept of uh, 5G becoming the first truly converged architecture end-to-end. -end. And this is looking at how we can serve our customers better, provide a seamless user experience where they shouldn't care which actual access network they're using at the time. Uh, and we're also able to obviously deliver uh, services to our customer at the best um, um, cost base. And again, Kevin, does this mean collaboration with a broader number of SDOs? Yes, um, BT has been working together with uh, other operators, like-minded fixed and mobile operators such as Deutsche Telekom and Orange um, and other actors as well 
um, and we've uh, been discussing this within both within 3GPP um, because it uh, obviously affects 3GPP as an issue, but also the Broadband Forum, which is responsible for developing the, the protocols that go to the residential gateways that, that BT offers to its customers. Uh, so in order to provide that totally round service to the customer, both the fixed side and the mobile side, we need to get 3GPP on the one side and the Broadband Forum on the other side to work together to make sure that the protocols work properly. So with 5G, could we see the wireless component as being a last mile access technology? Yes, absolutely. So at the end of the day, there are different radio access technologies, both li both licensed and unlicensed. And what we want to uh, be able to do is pick and choose the right technologies, both in the last mile, but also in the backhaul network, and obviously bring it all together in the core so that we can, at the end of the day, deliver the best uh, user experience that we can. And customers don't need to worry about which access network they need to be connecting to at the time. Now, the fourth area that BT highlighted was about roaming models and the fact that these may need to be changed and evolved. Why is that? So um, the current models out there uh, obviously exist and are very widely used and, and they will probably stay for quite some time, but we don't necessarily believe that they all fit for purpose for the future use cases uh, coming along. Um, a, a very good example probably is what's going on right now with voice over LTE roaming, where there is a big debate in industry between whether we send all the traffic back to the home network and, and follow a home routed model or whether we break it out locally. Obviously local breakout having its own advantages uh, for obvious reasons but then brings uh, challenges to do with interoperability, with network to network and so on. So we believe that in the future, especially with the explosion of services and service types that we're going to have in 5G, those models need to evolve. And we believe that there are uh, capabilities out there like network slicing, coming back to one of the earlier topics, which can help us um, extend the reach of the home operator network into the visited network, is something called federated network slicing, uh, and pretty much be able to serve your customers from a visited network Network, removing some of the interoperability issues of today's technologies. So if operators take heed of BT's priority areas to focus on, the timeline for 5G is met, we deliver of 2020, we won't be delivering an all singing and all dancing version of 5G then, will we? How important is it that we manage expectations? Yeah, I, th I think we have to manage expectations. Obviously, the four things that we've been talking about today are four amongst a few more that other operators are interested in, and, and there are things that vendors are interested in as well. So we can't expect to have a really compressed time frame and also include all of the things that we're wanting all in one in one hit. So obviously, there's a there's a standards timeline that is release 15. We have an early drop of release 15 uh, in December, and then we have the, the final release 15. Uh, next year and then there's a release 16 to follow on afterwards and some of what we've been talking about will be earlier and some will be later. Kevin and Maria thank you both very much indeed for joining us on Telecom TV.